gestational diabetes is the topic for this video and um, I wanted to uh, touch on uh, just a few brief points because it's a uh, diabetes in general is a very extensive topic so what I wanted to touch on in this video is the fact that if a woman uh, who is pregnant develops diabetes during her pregnancy that's known as gestational diabetes and that has uh, important consequences because it can lead to uh, some very severe problems in the fetus and there's a long list of them but there's one in particular that I wanted to concentrate on and that's fetal macrosomia what does that mean? Well, fetal macrosomia is uh, referring to a heavy baby. So you're looking at about a birth weight between 4,000 4, to 4,500 grams. And if this does happen, because directly because of the gestational diabetes, during delivery, in particular vaginal delivery, it can lead to something known as shoulder dystocia. And that's just simply because the, the fetus is so large that the, the delivery can result in this complication. The, the fetus's shoulder becomes impacted against the mother's uh, pelvic uh, bones, a pubis a synthesis, and uh, that can lead to this problem. When a woman does have um, her pregnancy testing uh, over the course of her uh, 38 weeks or 40 weeks, one of those tests is called an oral glucose tolerance test. And this is a test that is done um, to screen for uh, diabetes in pregnancy. And it's done in two steps. The first step, what you do is you give um, the patient uh, 50 grams of oral glucose and you um, wait one hour and then you test the blood sugar. And if the blood glucose level is greater than 130, then you proceed to the next step which is a 100 gram uh, glucose load and then you wait three hours and then you test the blood glucose level so that's known as an oral glucose tolerance test that's the way you, you would um, diagnose gestational diabetes uh, the treatment of gestational diabetes involves insulin um, insulin is by far the the best drug because it doesn't cross the placenta it does not cross the placenta um, other medications that can be used that are uh, oral medications include gliburide uh, which is uh, of course a a pill so I wanted to get into some clinical vignettes now A 22-year-old woman comes to the office because she's very upset about a complication that occurred during the delivery of her, th of her son three weeks ago. You have been treating her for various aches and pains since she was a child and she respects your opinions. She had an appendectomy at age 12 and shoulder surgery at age 18. Her prenatal course was complicated by gestational diabetes and you know that she smoked cigarettes and used cocaine uh, during the pregnancy because her mother told you. She tells you that at 38 weeks gestation she was at a bar with her boyfriend and her water broke. They went to the hospital and after pushing for three hours she delivered the fetal head but the rest of the body just did not come want to come out. The obstetrician had to deliver the baby by the posterior arm fracturing the humerus in the process. The factor in her history that most likely contributed to the difficult delivery is? Uh, good question, I think. Um, kind of makes you think a little bit. Well, the fact that she had surgery on her shoulder 
um, might sound similar to the, what happened to the baby, but uh, it's unrelated. Uh, maternal age really has um, some relation to shoulder dystocia, dystocia, but only if it's advanced maternal age. Uh, she's actually only 22, so advanced maternal age may if you're greater than 35, so in her case it's not that. Um, cigarette smoking has not been associated with shoulder dystocia, because that's what, what we're talking about here. That's the complication that occurred in her delivery. And um, cocaine, which is another thing that she used during pregnancy, um, is not associated with shoulder dystocia. So we're down to two, age or, or the diabetes. Well, she delivered at 38 weeks, so that's term. And gestational age tends to happen... Um, Gestational age is related to shoulder dystocia when it's post dates. So, for example, if you were greater than 40 weeks gestation, so 38 weeks doesn't really fall into that category. So, by process of elimination, is gestational diabetes, but we already know that because she can uh, have a baby that's uh, large, uh, overweight, and that can lead to a very difficult delivery, which leads to this complication. Uh, next one, a 29-year-old primigravid woman at 34 weeks gestation comes to the physician for a prenatal visit. At 28 weeks, she failed her 50-gram one-hour glucose tolerance test. She also failed her follow-up 100-gram three-hour glucose tolerance test. With a normal fasting glucose, but abnormal one, two, and three-hour values. Over the past several weeks, she has maintain good control of her fasting and two-hour postprandial glucose levels by adhering to the diet recommendations of her physician. She asks the physician what effect her, di her type of diabetes can have on her f and or her fetus. Which of the following is the most appropriate response? Well, she's basically saying, you know, I I've got this gestational diabetes what what is that going to do to me um, and my fetus? Well, the there's two big things. The first one, of course, is that can a, ba a baby can be macrosomic. There could be macrosomia of the fetus, which is defined as a large baby in this weight range. And the second one, uh, I guess this. There's three, I guess, because this sort of macrosomia can lead to a complication known as shoulder dystocia because of the baby being so large. This problem can occur during uh, vaginal delivery. But another uh, issue that can happen, I guess, in her, these, of course, are referring to her fetus, but what can happen to her is that after the pregnancy, she can develop diabetes. So this would be what we call overt diabetes, meaning diabetes when she's not pregnant. So that'd be right here, C. So gestational diabetes is not associated with future diabetes. That's clearly wrong, because we say that it is, of course.